Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to use scatter plots in Stata. In order to do so, let's just dive right in. I'm going to preload this data set, Census 13, and I'm going to create a scatter plot to start with of the relationship between the marriage rate and the divorce rate in states. And if you want to go in and look at these data, you can. It's a pre-existing data set in Stata, and it's basically just the demographic characteristics of the states, including marriage rate, divorce rate, population, and other features. And what I'm interested in today is showing you a couple of variations on the scatter plot, which is really a classic way to look at the relationship of uh, two continuous variables to each other. I just showed you a scatter plot in which divorce rate was here on the x-axis and marriage rate was here on the y-axis. Now I've kind of flipped that over, so I want you to notice that the order matters here. So I just entered the command uh, dv create for divorce rate followed by marriage rate. And let's have a look at where divorce rate showed up in our axis. It was the y-axis. So the variable that you enter first in a scatter plot will end up on the y-axis. That's just something to bear in mind for presentation's sake. Now. I want you to look at that, that graph again. There's something interesting about it. Uh, notice there's an outlier here in marriage rate and, and, and divorce rate actually as well when you, look at, when you look at that scatter plot from that perspective. That is Nevada. So the scatter plot is, is, is kind of bunched up over here because this one outlier is distorting the way the rest of the data are demonstrated. So you know there's a couple of ways we can get around that. Using Stata, we can use these operating functions like here, I've created a scatter plot, but I've restricted it to all states that have a marriage rate of less than 0.1. And so no, notice that's a lot cleaner because we got rid of that outlier. The scatter plot now actually shows the trend that existed in this relationship between the data. There's a positive correlation. Uh, it looks as if when marriage rate goes up, so does the divorce rate. Uh, and that wasn't quite as clearly seen when we had the outlier. So that's a good example of how you can use uh, Stata's other commands and coding functions to alter your scatter plot. Something else I'm going to do here, for example, is I'm going to create the scatter plot with region number one only. And that region in this data set is the northeast, by the way. So notice we have a lot fewer data points just because I, I culled that, that scatter plot down to, to northeast. And it's really indefinitely extensible, which is the cool thing about Stata. If you look here, I've done the same thing again, but I've now limited it to region one and two together. So we now have more data kind of bunched up here. Uh, and I, I just took a subset of what, what was in the data set to include, to choose to include in the scatter plot using the coding. Uh, let's look at status M label function, which is really cool here. State, of course, is a variable in the data set. And what I want to do now is recreate the scatter plot. Uh, I want to delimit it to two regions, regions one and two. And I want to tack on my label here so I can actually get some information. And that looks really good. It's it's maybe a little bit busy, but it's it's very useful because you can you can get a look at the individual states here rather than just the, the data points and guess as to which data point represents which state. I think it's a really cool thing. Let's keep extending it. I'm going to just show you that you can change the color scheme. I like the S1 color scheme in Stata, but there are a ton of other schemes. There's S1 mono, for example, in grayscale. If you're working with APA, that's quite useful. So if you tack on that command, which I'm just highlighting here, um, you can go ahead and do the labeling of the states, and you can change the color of the scatter plot. And I think this is actually a cleaner look, so I like that. Um, one last thing that I want to be able to do with the scatter plot is I want to be able to create a line here. Uh, and I've chosen an X line and just an arbitrary value to demonstrate what we can do here. We can create this line to show maybe a distinction between where the higher divorce rate states might fall or, or something of that kind. If we want to create a quadrant or a hemisphere in the scatter plot, we can do it using this code. And again, I do invite you to go to 272analytics.com to look at uh, this code because it's all available in the web page associated with the scatter plot tutorial in Stata. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. 
Therefore, we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter three and chapter four. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day, you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter four uh, following a perfect chapter three and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.